If you want to continue to follow our adventure, click subscribe. So you don't miss anything, click the bell notification. Hello, Louse on the Road subscribers and followers. There are times in your life that really reaffirms your beliefs. Last year, it, it, Carolyn and I both said that we felt like we were being punished for living in a pop-up camper. I mean, it just seemed like one bad thing after another was happening to us. Almost unreasonable. Cold and, and, and rainy the entire summer. I think we spent the entire summer in the 50s with rain. We always struggled to try to find internet, and we always had these issues and that issue, and it, it was just endless. Then we uh, we went down to Florida to, to enjoy our winter, and we got called back to Missouri because Carolyn's daughter got uh, sick. She, she got cancer, so we had to come back and take care of her and run her back and forth to the hospital. Well, after that, we went back down to Florida and spent another three months down there, and then someone burned down our pop-up camper. It has been a very testing year. We've been tested, and I'm sure of it, because now we've built the uh, homemade truck camper, and I recognize we're only a few months into this. I am telling you, the adventure is, is just gotten so much easier and so much better. As everybody knows, our last campsite, we were at a free campsite, to tell you how much easier things have gotten, that had uh, free electric. Now, we would not stay there in the pop-up camper because I'd always heard that a lot of these city parks that have free electric sometimes are not all that safe. Well, we thought with the truck camper that we'd test it out and see how it worked. If we didn't like it, we could leave. We left. As a matter of fact, when we got there, we were there an entire day. Well, not an entire day. We got there at 9 o'clock. It was about noon the next day. Someone parked right on top of it. Well, in the pop-up, we'd, we'd always just have to suffer through it. Well, with the truck camper, we put our chairs away that we were sitting in and moved to a different camp spot. Yesterday we decided we were going to leave to, well, it was six days and they were getting ready to have a, a, a celebration there uh, starting today, that was Friday. So we decided to go ahead and leave a day early and we thought what we'd do is head west uh, through South Dakota. We weren't going to really push it, what we intended to do was go over to uh, Sioux Falls, do some grocery shopping and then head on out. Well by the time we got done grocery shopping it was two o'clock and so we went down to the rest area and my goodness there was 40 mile an hour crosswinds well we got a, this truck camper and the truck was handling fine i wasn't jerking or anything but you sure could feel it wobbling and i i just thought you know what i'm not going to stress it i'm just not going to push it I, I don't know what it's the, the homemade truck camper is actually capable of doing so i, I just wasn't going to push it so when we got to the rest area we uh, posted a video you know i thought let's just wait until the wind dies down it's supposed to die down at seven o'clock we took a nap in the back of the truck and thought we'd drive some in the night. But again, it was no big deal. My entire life, I was rushed, 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 rushed. I was in no rush, not with this thing. The wind died down around 6 o'clock, so we just headed on. We saw this one rest stop, and, and it was a scenic overlook. You know, overlooked the Missouri River. And uh, boy, I, and I actually thought maybe we'll stay the night here. Well, come to find out that South Dakota only allows you to stay three hours and then you had to move on, which we just kept on traveling. And we were gonna to come to this, this campsite that you see here. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that absolutely amazing? And it got to be uh, 11 o'clock. Now we went through a time change, so it was actually 10 o'clock by the time we got here. It was very dark. And uh, GPS is telling us it's right here. Of course, the GPS is telling us it's off on the corner out here in the middle of the field. And we saw this little side road that would have put us right where this little dot on the GPS said we were supposed to be out in the middle of the field. And we turned down into the road. Now remember, it's dark. So we turned into the side road. And it's got a sign that says, uh, closed gate. When you get to go through. And we're like, wait a minute. What is this? Of course, it's a, a USDA uh, sign. So it says it's federal land. And, and here we are. We're on a dirt road. Now. That's a big indicator for me when we were on the pop-up, we weren't going to go down it. We would not have went down this road had it been in the pop-up. But for the first time, Carolyn and I decided, you know what, let's go ahead and try it. We'll turn around if nothing happens. It doesn't appear to be private property, so we, we did. We drove down, and sure enough, we saw a big Class A camped. Now, we can't see anything. Absolutely nothing. We couldn't see any of this. So... We, we drive on down and, and we get to the end of the road. There's a fence, so we park. We get set up. It only took us a few minutes to get set up. 
and we go to bed. Now, here's the thing. Assuming that we would have went down the dirt road with the pop-up camper, it has been extremely windy. 40, 50 mile an hour gust. I'm not sure I would have even been comfortable in the pop-up. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, the pop-up's designed to have no 40 mile an hour winds, and yes, I agree, but can you imagine living in a pop-up? Trust me, living in a pop-up with it constantly going, it's constantly just flapping. When you're living, you'd like to have some peace at you know at times. It's it's not a camping trip. I understand when you're camping and a storm comes through, it's quite exciting. Y'all go into pop up camper, and you have a good time playing games and you know whatever. And but the weekend ends and then you're back to your business. The truck doesn't care. This truck camper just doesn't care. I try to point it where the nose is into the wind. That way it doesn't rock us so bad. So this morning. It was 4.40 when the sun rose, and it, I wake up on sunrise, I always have. I laid up in bed and uh, looked out the window, and that is what I saw. Now, I kind of expected to see this, but these pictures that I am showing you do not do this place justice. I saw a video of this place, and I thought, oh, that's cool, I, I want to go check this out. This is amazing. So, my point to this video is, is, is even though that we suffered tremendously through our, our first half of, of the year, suffered our dream, the, the dream was pretty miserable. It was worth hanging in there because the second portion of our dream, Little House on the Road 2.0, has been worth it. So, suggestion to you is when it gets tough, when you're living your dream, whatever your dream is, remember, I don't advocate that you live out here. I usually tell people, don't do it. But whatever your dream is, please go follow your dream. But when the times get tough, let yourself know that it's going to get better and you're going to get to the spot where it's beautiful. Like this. So, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Click like if you like video. And happy travels.